so four or five years. It was six years he had his first big concert in public at the Imperial Court in Vienna. And Maria Theresa, who was ruling our country in those days, she was so fascinated. She was kneeling down in front of him and she gave him a diamond ring as a gift. And her little daughter, Marie Antoinette, was present at the concert as well. She was seven years old. And she said after the concert to the six-year-old Mozart, don't worry, when we're adults, I'm going to marry you anyhow. How old are you? Nine years. Nine years. You see the seven-year-old girl said to the six-year-old boy, uh, don't worry, when we're adults, I'm going to marry you. Would have been maybe better for her to, than to lose her head in France afterwards. And you can imagine how proud the father was of the uh, success they had in Vienna. He wanted to present his children immediately all over in Europe and organize the big West European concert tour that lasted three and a half years. Try to imagine, ladies and gentlemen, a young family with two children, six and 11 years old, being on a concert tour in a horse carriage like it was in those days for three and a half years. And this was only possible because the Archbishop who was ruling here, he was fascinated by music. He adored and admired the Mozarts, gave the money, gave the permission. And this situation changed when the Archbishop died because his successor was not any longer interested in music. The successor employed Mozart and his father because it was fashion to have court musicians around but he treated both of them like normal people employed, not like great artists as the other one did. And that's the reason why Mozart decided to leave Salzburg. The father he could handle with the new situation, the son could not. In one of his letters he complains bitterly that with the newly elected Archbishop he has to eat with the servants in the kitchen after the council before he was used to dine together with the Archbishop and his guests and to be in the center of interest. And in another letter he wrote, I just hate Salzburg and all the Salzburgers. And against the will of his father, he left Salzburg, he went to Vienna, and there he got married against the will of his father with the German lady Constanze. They had six children together. As I said before, four of them died young. This was normal in those days. Only two sons survived, but both sons of Mozart did not get married and had no children. Mozart himself, he died in Vienna at the age of 35 years. But within this short life, he composed more than 1,000 pieces, you know. And today we make our living on him. <laughs> Uh, there are still the famous number 626, couple of rule, you know, that's correct, but meanwhile there have been discovered so many more pieces, so many of these numbers have A, B, C, D, and we talk about more. Just last year it happened, they discovered the melody and the experts agreed that it was definitely composed by Mozart. Wow. Today all the experts agree that Mozart died as natural death. He was definitely not poisoned by Salieri, like I still learned in school, you know, that's not correct. He died a natural death, and according to the latest researches, they say he died from a kind of rheumatic fever, which you heal nowadays easily in a few days with antibiotics. In those days, they used to do the bleeding, and we know they did the bleeding on Mozart just two days before he died. A weak person losing so much blood, that's the dead for sure. So we can say wrong medication in the wrong time. But one thing is sure that he left us rich and I usually tell my guests in Salzburg we have two legs to walk on. On one leg is written Mozart, on the other leg sound of music. Oh. <laughs>